guys and welcome to another video review. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Center Customs 18350 ready-made. These flashlights are built out of the UAE by a guy named Solman. Solman has put up several iterations of this flashlight over the years, but this is the latest. To be clear, the design of the Center RM was actually released a couple years ago in 2016, I believe, but um, not much has actually changed spec-wise from previous runs, so much of what I'm going to be going over today applies to those as well. Starting off with what I like about the Center RM, the dimensions are very good overall. In particular, I like that the flashlight is very, very short. Um, the previous model of the flashlight, which was called the Center Customs Tri-EDC, measured about 3.2 inches tall. The Center RM itself is 3.1 inches tall, so it's cool that Center has managed to shave off just a tiny, tiny bit more um, length from an already very short flashlight for the 18350 battery it uses. Um, the body is also tapered, as you can see here, so it kind of curves inward on both sides. And you can also see that there's very nice rings in there. What this effectively allows for is a more substantial grip if you're wearing um, gloves or just gripping it in general, I guess. Honestly, it's a very nice grip. But yeah, circumference-wise, it's a little bit thick, but that gives it a very robust feel in the hand, in my opinion. The build quality is also very good on this flashlight. Because I owned one of the earlier models, also in titanium, I can point out what's been improved between the two. Firstly, the threading on this flashlight is a lot, lot better. Um, the threading on the RM is just smooth and just very, very, um, I don't know, it just doesn't screech or lock at all, which is great. Um, titanium flashlights are well known for having gritty threads, it's just an aspect of the metal, and that definitely was the case with my um, previous Center Customs 18350, the Tri-ADC, that is. And yeah, so the seamless threads on this model are a good indication of build quality. Secondly, fit wasn't always consistent between the head and the body. Um, sometimes there'd be a gap between the two that you could see on older models um, that was especially apparent if you mixed and matched um, different body materials, but that isn't the case with this one. Um, honestly, I'd be very hard pressed to see, um, to point out where the head and body meet. I'd sort of be inclined to say it's right before the tritium slots, but it's actually after. So yeah, very, very good, um, uh, very good machining on this flashlight. It's really a testament to the tolerances that the parts are made to. And it also appears that Sinner has done away with the three-piece design that was used in the Tri-ADC run. Um, the tail itself here used to separate from the body, um, as would the head separate from the body, and so it was sort of a three-piece design. So yeah, this is no longer the case with the Sinner RM, and I think this was the right decision because it allows for less room for failure in a two-piece design. I really like that Sinner's flashlights have improved greatly in terms of build quality over the years, and the Sinner RM is definitely the culmination of this. Something else that's new on the Sinner RM is that it comes with numerous slots pre-milled into the body for tritium vials. Um, personally, I don't like tritium on the body itself because they're, they're a lot more exposed to the elements, and tritium does tend to break pretty easily if you whack it. Uh, but I know that there's a lot of people out there who like the look. It's more of an aesthetics thing, but um, it does also have a practical use, such as if you leave it on your nightstand at night and you wake up in the middle of the night and you want to locate your flashlight quickly. So yeah, I can totally dig that. Um, but generally what I'll do instead is I'll swap out the standard optic for a drilled optic with um, tritium in it. So yeah, that sort of protects it a lot more. Um, but of course you don't get that cool aesthetic look. Of course, um, this is just personal preference, but I do find that the cost of tritium tends to add up quickly, especially when you have got like 14 slots milled into the body and you've got to um, put tritium into each one. It's also a big hassle, kind of, in my opinion, because you have to apply, I think it's Northern 61 is what most people use, and you also have to cure the tritium inside the slots themselves. And it's just a pain in the ass to get them out after. You have, you have to literally crack the tritium, generally, I think. Uh, but yeah, moving on, the flashlight is using three Nichia 219C emitters. You guys probably already know this, but um, that basically allows for better color rendition. These are um, 5000K Kelvin, so they're the neutral color temperature range. You do sacrifice some brightness with the Nichia emitters, but um, it's mostly negligible. Because the flashlight uses a reverse clicky, as you guys can see here, so yeah, um, you click and then you just tap to cycle modes. But yeah, um, with the reverse clicky, the driver can basically draw a lot more amps without burning out the switch. And what this eff effectively translates to is that you get a lot more brightness than you'd probably ever need, even with the Nichia emitters. So yeah, I love the emitters and they're good stuff, just what you'd expect to see from an EDC oriented flashlight like this one. I'm fairly sure that Sinner is using the narrow clear Carco optic. This is the standard optic for triple LED setups and it gives you a nice broad hotspot that's great for short range tasks. 
Um, if you want to use the flashlight for medium range applications, that's not an issue though, and it'll punch through in sheer brightness alone despite how floody the beam is. Now that we've gone over the good stuff, let's talk about what I don't like. Um, the clip has improved, but it's still not up to par in my opinion. This is not the stock clip, I should mention that now. It's actually an Akuma clip I had lying around that I put on it. This here is the stock clip. Um, the previous owner did some sort of bead blast job on it or something. He said it was for durability. I'm not sure exactly what it is. It does look good though. Um, props for that. But yeah, the stock clip is just a little flimsy and um, it just doesn't feel as substantial as you'd expect from a custom flashlight like this one. Uh, what has improved in terms of the clip though is that the clip on previous models, or at least my model, used to rest on the head of the flashlight itself. So um, that point there where the clip meets the base of the body would rest on the head. That was just a horrible design choice in my opinion and um, I'm glad it's been rectified. What would happen basically is that every time I would go to change the battery, the clip would run up against the head as it was turning and that would leave a long, long snail trail all around the titanium itself. So yeah, not good. I love that it's been rectified, but um, maybe just make the clip a little bit more substantial. Um, not my favorite clip, but it does look good. It works well, so yeah. Um, second thing I'm not really liking about this flashlight is the driver. Um, hey, so can, I'll pop it open so you guys can see the driver itself. I really don't think the driver has changed at all in any of the models that he's released over the years because um, this flashlight operates the exact same as my previous model did. The driver has four modes plus a turbo mode and it uses mode memory. Maybe a few years ago this would have been acceptable, but some level of programmability should be the bare minimum in a custom flashlight at this point. Um, this is 2018. The lowest mode, the moonlight mode, this one is also way too low, too bright in my opinion. My bad. And so yeah, the lack of flexibility in the stock driver is no doubt one of the sim the Center RM's biggest pitfalls. The final thing I dislike is the price and lack of availability for these flashlights. Currently, the MSRP of this flashlight sits at roughly 500 bucks and they're sold out. It didn't always used to be that way and prices have skyrocketed over the years. Um, when Center first started out, it used to be that you could purchase a um, complete custom flashlight for $150 if you went with the aluminum models, which by the way, he doesn't sell those anymore, so yeah. Um, the previous model to this one, the predecessor, the Tri-DC, used MSRP for $350 in all metals. Um, that's still expensive, no doubt, but um, at least it was comparable to other custom flashlights on the market. In fact, Sooner's flashlights sort of became synonymous with being a bargain amongst customs, um, believe it or not. Uh, for just, just an example, but uh, a DC-1 from Akluma cost 300 bucks for the bare aluminum model. But for 50 bucks more, you could get a Sinner Tri DC made out of titanium with similar specs. So, yeah, the Sinner Tri DC was clearly a good value, and that just isn't the case anymore with this flashlight. Um, from a certain aspect, I understand where Sinner is coming from. A lot of other makers have entered the game, the flashlight game, bringing uh, custom flashlights at insanely low prices. Um, you're competing against companies like Raylight, uh, Freelux, and Vision HQ. And what Sooner's trying to do is he doesn't want to lower the price to compete, but instead he's trying to raise the quality of his flashlights and the price as well um, to target higher price markets. And clearly this strategy seems to be working because every run of Sooner's flashlights have sold out almost instantly. Um, it really kind of makes me sad to know that customization also isn't available anymore due to the demand um, for Solman's work. It used to be that you could fill out a Google Doc with your exact specs for the flashlight and Solman would then build it and then ship it out to you from the UAE. This isn't the case anymore because you can't keep up with the demand, um, hence the center RM that I have it here in front of me today. Um, the ready-made in the name kind of says it all. As it is, I'm sort of hard-pressed to recommend the center RM at the price it commands. One of the most critical aspects of the flashlight, the driver falls short in a bad way. It also costs a ton to get the driver swapped out if you don't know what you're doing, and if you're like me, well, you don't. And I do like that Sinner has improved greatly upon the flashlight's build quality though, and it's always cool to see makers progress in their own craft. The RM definitely isn't worth it as a flashlight, and this really isn't different from most other custom flashlights, but it does appreciate nicely as a finely machined hunk of titanium. On that note, I would really like to hope that the RM is using grade 5 titanium, but I honestly wouldn't be surprised if it was using grade 2 titanium still. So yeah, overall, the Sinner RM makes a great host, but the choice of driver and the high price really hinders it, that and the lack of availability for it. I hope you guys found this review informative. If you did, be sure to hit that like button and to subscribe for future content. Thanks for watching.